I am not a cyclist. I'm not particularly fond of bicycles. I don't care about the latest bicycle technologies. I don't read about bicycle gear. I don't watch bicycle racing. I don't go on vacation to cycle. I don't cycle for sport. There's literally nothing wrong with liking any of these things, of course. It's just not who I am. I do ride a bicycle almost every day, though, along with hundreds of other people who are also not cyclists. At least, not by the definition you'll hear in most English-speaking countries. Let me explain. I grew up in a typical North American, car-infested city called London, Ontario, Canada. I and everybody else around me knew that bicycles were just for little kids. So when I turned 16, I ditched the bike, got a driver's license, and started driving a car, like the rest of the adults. Well, my parents' car, at least. When I graduated university, moved to the big city, and started working, I took public transit to work. But there was a problem, because Canadian cities are built wrong and let their public transit vehicles get stuck in traffic. This meant that my commute was highly unreliable and sometimes painfully slow. I worked downtown and had no parking spot at work, not that I could afford a car anyway, so that option was out. So I did something I thought I'd never do. When I was 27 years old, I broke down and bought a bicycle. This made my commute to work a lot more reliable, but it was still pretty terrible. At the time, Toronto had very few bicycle lanes, certainly none along my route, and every ride was dangerous and stressful. A few years later, I got a new higher paying job that was out in suburbia, so I did what everyone does, ditched the bike and bought a car, which started several years of the absolute worst commutes of my life. There's a reason they call it the Don Valley parking lot. But then my wife and I moved to the UK. I would take the train up to Cambridge each day and then the bus into work. I soon learned that it was faster to cycle, so I dusted off the old bike and started cycling again. Over the next few years, we lived in many different countries, and I used whatever method got me to work the fastest. In Taipei, it was by metro. In Brussels, it was by car. When we moved back to Toronto, it was fastest to take the subway. I didn't care how I traveled, I just did whatever was most convenient. Over the years, I've learned there really aren't that many car people, train people, or bicycle people. The vast majority of people just want to get from point A to point B as quickly and efficiently as possible. A few years later, I once again got a job where it was fastest to go by bicycle. So I did that. But what I didn't realize is there had been a change in the culture from the last time I had cycled to work in Toronto over 10 years earlier. Because now, I wasn't just a guy riding his bike to work. I was a cyclist. <laughs> The first time I realized this, I was having a discussion with coworkers. I don't remember what we were talking about, but I remember it had nothing to do with bicycles. And yet, after I said something, my manager responded with, huh, well, you would say that. You're a cyclist. <laughs> this really took me by surprise, as I had never thought of myself that way. I mean, sure, I sometimes rode my bike to various jobs over the past 15 years, but only out of convenience. What was even more bizarre was that I had taken the streetcar to work that day. So how was I a cyclist when I hadn't even cycled? But I quickly learned that in many car-centric cities, when you decide to start riding a bike, you implicitly agree to becoming a part of a group, a cyclist. This comes with it many assumptions and stereotypes, almost all of them negative. For example, people expected me to become a spokesperson for cyclists. It was literally every other week that my wife or I would have someone say to us, Oh, you're a cyclist? Ugh, I once saw this cyclist. Which would inevitably devolve into a long, angry rant about some minor traffic violation and usually ended with something like, I hope you're not like one of them. We were then expected to either agree with them or justify this behavior somehow on behalf of our fellow cyclists. Somehow drivers were never held to this same standard. This got to be so absurd that whenever my wife or I would hear about the regular occurrences of a driver in Toronto running a red light, driving twice the speed limit, crashing into a building, or killing yet another person on a sidewalk, we would just respond with, yeah, but I once saw this cyclist run a stop sign. It's exhausting being expected to be held accountable for everything any person on a bicycle has ever done. My wife had it worse than me, because she worked mostly with people who would drive downtown from the suburbs. And since she wasn't a man between the age of 20 to 35, she didn't fit the cyclist stereotype. Why do you ride a bicycle? They'd ask. Are you some kind of tree hugger or something? 
or a hippie? Why would you do that? It's bizarre how much the topic of riding a bicycle triggers an emotional and even angry response out of seemingly normal people. And it's very telling in English-speaking countries when people will routinely complain about some idiot in a car they saw, but it's never an idiot on a bike, it's those damn cyclists. It doesn't matter that every study ever done into the behavior of cyclists has shown they break the law less often than drivers do, the stereotypes remain. The one crazy cyclist sticks out in a driver's mind, while they don't even notice the dozens of quiet cyclists right beside them who are just trying to get to where they're going without dying. These stereotypes have serious consequences. One particularly sad story was that of Tom Sampson, a teacher in Toronto who was killed while riding his bicycle to work. When police arrived, they didn't bother to do a proper investigation because it was so obvious. This guy was a cyclist, and cyclists always run red lights, right? Obviously, this time it got him killed. Case closed. But to anyone that knew Tom, they knew the pieces didn't fit. He wasn't someone who would take risks when cycling, but the police wouldn't listen, so his widow had to hire a private investigator and uncover the truth. Tom had been waiting to turn left at this red light and was rear-ended by a driver who wasn't paying attention, sending him into the intersection where he was hit by another vehicle, killing him. Tom wasn't just some scofflaw cyclist. He was a husband and father riding his bike to work on streets that are dangerous and unforgiving to people outside of a car. And his family deserves a fair and complete investigation from the police, just like anyone else. Of course, eight years later, no changes have been made to improve the safety at this intersection, which is sadly typical for Canada. But the topic of cyclists is complicated because ultimately, many of the people who ride in car-centric places really do like bicycles. But others do this because they feel they have to band together, for their own safety and sanity, against the stereotypes of a car-centric society. But unfortunately, this makes it even more difficult for people who just want to ride a bicycle. Because everywhere from advocacy groups to local bike shops to the bicycle lanes themselves are dominated by people who are really into bicycles and they often have very strong opinions about what it means to be a cyclist. If you want to ride a bike, you're going to be one of us, and you better do it right or you'll be giving cyclists a bad name. That's a lot of responsibility just because you want to get to work faster. These divides make the us versus them situation even worse, and over the past few years, the press has been fueling the fires of this divide. The UK press in particular has gone crazy about reporting on every bad thing that a cyclist has ever done. People are killed by drivers literally every single day on British roads. But when a cyclist killed a woman, it was front page news for weeks. In Canada, this anti-cycling messaging was routinely reinforced not just by the press, but also by suburban politicians, like the crack-smoking mayor of Toronto, Rob Ford. Okay, the cyclists are a pain in the ass. Killed. My heart bleeds for him when I hear someone gets killed. But it's their own fault at the end of the day. Yes, I have smoked crack cocaine. The sad truth is that labeling people as cyclists dehumanizes them and puts them in an outgroup that some people believe justifies literal violence against them. In many North American, British, and Irish cities, there is the concept of the punishment pass, where a driver purposefully drives as close as possible to someone on a bicycle to intimidate them and punish them for taking up space on the road. I asked on Twitter for examples from the community, and even though I have a much smaller audience on Twitter, I receive dozens of videos. These close passes may not look close on camera because of the lenses used on sports cams, but they're really scary in real life. Here's an example from Toronto of a driver passing so close that he actually hit the handlebars of the person cycling, despite a full lane to the left that could have been used to pass. Many people told me they'd stop cycling for months, years, or even forever because of events like this. And then there's rolling coal. Some diesel truck owners get their vehicles modified so that it burns fuel less efficiently and emits a thick black smoke. Modifications can cost up to $5,000 and sometimes are triggered with a switch on the dashboard. They do this so that they can punish people who are cycling or anyone else they don't like. I have lost all hope for humanity. There were two times in Toronto where I was aggressively run off the road by drivers who hated cyclists and took their anger out on me. Two times where I could have been seriously injured or even killed, not because of what I'd done, but because of the group they associated me with, just because I dared to ride a bicycle on city streets. 
I totally understand how people become the stereotypical angry cyclist, as I was starting to become one myself. Because you are constantly judged unfairly, put in a position of having to justify the actions of others, and have to put up with literal physical harm just because of the stereotypes of your group. It was an eye-opening experience for me, because as a straight, white, cisgendered man, I finally internalized what it was like to be judged by what minority group other people put me in, rather than for anything I had done myself. The huge difference, of course, being that I could stop cycling at any time. So I did. Taking public transit in mixed traffic was slow and unreliable, but nobody ever tried to run me over just because I was a transitist. I don't want to join a group. I don't want to constantly hear lame stories of misplaced outrage. I don't want to be responsible for the actions of others, and I don't want them to be held responsible for my actions either. I don't want to be forced into a position of being an activist, a spokesperson, or even an inspiration to others to start cycling. I just want to get to where I'm going quickly and efficiently. Thankfully, but far too slowly, things are starting to change. As safer protected bicycle infrastructure is installed, it's attracting people of all ages who would otherwise never consider cycling. And it's starting to make cycling more of a normal activity. That exposure is slowly changing the culture again, because it's hard to be anti-cyclist when 10 of your co-workers, your sister, and three of your friends ride a bike. It's one of those things I didn't really appreciate until I was living in the Netherlands for a while. I can buy groceries, visit friends, get to work, and take the kids to school however I want. Nobody questions my choice, nobody judges me for the actions of others, and nobody screams at me, honks at me, or tries to run me off the road. Here, I'm never a cyclist. I'm just another guy riding a bicycle. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my supporters on Patreon, who pay me to complain about people who complain about cyclists. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, visit patreon.com slash notjustbikes.